Hi, welcome to Tuesday Tips. This is Pam Dunwald, your, one of your nurse advocates from your nurse advocates consulting. And we are going to talk a little bit about struggling to build a care team or have support for those of you that are managing or providing the care for an aging loved one, whether they have a chronic illness or disease or they're suffering, suffering from some form of dementia. So we want to kind of give you some tips and some strategies in these Tuesday tips to uh, help you try and identify people that may be willing to assist you and kind of where to find those things. So we're going to uh, jump into that uh, real quick here. So we are the title of this Tuesday tips is Seeking Kindred Spirits, Finding Your Care Team Without Breaking the Bank. And Building a supportive care team is really essential for maintaining your overall health and well-being and having the right people by your side makes all the difference, especially when you're you're navigating these what can be challenging times. So people ask, you know, where do where, you know, okay, fine, you know, where do I find people? How do I, you know, and and so what we do in our, our boot camp, and we'll share more information about that for those of you that may want to you know, that are ready to actually build the boot camp because that's what we're going to do is we are actually going to come alongside you for those 30 days and help you build your care team. But for those of you that maybe not be ready or just looking for some information, kind of do it on your own. The first thing that we want to do is we want to um, draw on a piece of paper, draw, a you know, draw us a big circle. And then on the middle of that, just draw a small circle. Who are the people um, in your inner circle? And that's what we'll call it, the inner circle. So um, your uh, siblings, uh, children, grandchildren, cousins, immediate family. Who in that immediate family can you contact as far as helping? Now, I don't, and, and make a list of those. I don't, it doesn't matter if they live in town, out of town, just start, just start your list. And I know a lot of people are, um, you know, for some reason feel that they can't help, but we're going to work through that and we're going to uh, work on the next step after we develop this. The next step would be looking at their zone of genius. What can they do if they are far away? You know, can they do phone calls? Can they do a once a week check-in call uh, with your um, aging loved ones? Can they help them keep their doctor's appointment? Can they have access to their my chart? Maybe that you have someone maybe that has some kind of healthcare experience, but maybe they don't live close by, but could they be the one to check in on their my chart and just make sure that things are going smoothly? There's lots of things that we can do. And that's why the boot camp is going to be so beneficial because we're going to be able to work alongside you with your specific people, your specific circle and work with you on, on identifying these zone of genius. So I'm really going to try hard for this Tuesday tips video to, um, you know, try and be as generic as, as possible to give you some, some good ideas. You know, one of the things is a lot of people are willing to help, but they're, they don't want to ask because they don't want you to feel some, some people feel, well, gosh, you know, maybe they don't want any help or, you know, and, and so people are, are a little hesitant to step up and say, Hey, you know, and raise their hand and say, Hey, I can help. But if you ask them, you know, that, most people are willing to help in some kind of a capacity. So once we look at that inner circle, those immediate families, then we reach out to friends who are friends of the family, who are close neighbors that maybe your aging loved one has a relationship with or they know. So then we start to look at that. And then we look at church or other communities or organizations. If they're a member of you know, the Eagles or the VFW or some other organization or the church, like I said, the church family, then we start to widen out that circle. And you'll be surprised once you start writing down names, go through your phone, you know, have uh, had jar your memory, who, who um, maybe gets their mail for them, who does maybe grocery shopping, who runs errands for them, what kind of people already are helping in a, in a very kind of unorganized way that you can add to be building your care team. And again, a, a lot of people are willing to ask, but they're they're afraid to volunteer, so to speak, because they're not sure 
you know, if you if you want help or how you would feel about them asking if you if you need help. A lot of people make it sense of, oh, no, I got this. I got this. I don't need help. And when it comes to all the, the time and effort and, and the management that goes into caring for an aging loved one, especially when they have de dementia, I mean, if, if you're managing all of that on yourself, kudos to you. But I challenge you to take our um, our our caregiver self-awareness checklist, which is divided up in three different sections. And it, it assesses how you're doing with your caregiving emotionally, physically, and how good or how strong is your support system. So um, if I, I encourage you, if you think you're doing fantastic, I encourage you just to, to take that checklist. We'll also include that here. That's a free checklist that you can do. And just to maybe bring some awareness where you may need some help. And, and I just want to make sure, and I'm not, I'm not criticizing anybody um, saying that you can't do it. You know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have can, but I'm just concerned that you're having time for yourself and that you're, you're taking care of you while you're doing such a great job of taking care of an aging loved one. So once we've identified, um, these, we have these lists and we have, the, then, then maybe just jot down some notes, um, you know, before you even, contact anybody, you want to start to get organized. So jot down some notes next to the people and say, you know, maybe what capacity, what are they good at? What, what can they do? What they, and also what they can't do. Um, you know, maybe your neighbor is great at helping mow the lawn or, or shoveling snow in the wintertime, but they're not going to take your aging, you know, mom or dad to the bathroom. So these are the type of things that we want to put down is, you know, what can they do? Can, you know, um, church families, churches are great and other organizations and, you know, um, groups are, are wonderful, like doing meal prep, bringing freezing meals and things like that. So, you know, look at all the tasks. So once you have these people down and what they could do, it's important to identify the needs of your aging loved ones. So you, you want to, you know, what do you exactly need help with? What days of the week do you need help with? What times do you need help with and what kind of tasks do you need help with in order to free up some of your time and, and, and take some of the pressure off of you? And so once you get these three things done, now you are, are well on your way for beginning and getting ready to be able to um, reach out to some of these potential care team members. So, you know, as we were saying, a good, the ideal care team includes a mix of family, friends, healthcare professionals, you know, if you want to bring in uh, a patient advocate such as ourselves, we can manage that healthcare portion of that. That is also an option um, as part of that care team, although it wouldn't be a volunteer, but that's, that is something that you can add. And, and our goal is to help you build as, as many, build a care team of as many volunteers as possible so that the, the out of cost money to, to hire private caregivers you know, is, is, is as minimal as, as possible. Cause that, you know, especially if you're in the arena with a dementia a loved one where you're, you know, 24 seven care, that's, that's a big chunk of change. I mean, it can cost, you know, a couple thousand dollars a week for round the clock private duty care. So um, that's, uh, you know, where, where people run into trouble. So how do you, but you know, how do you identify the right individuals? We talked about that. Um, people that people that are generally showing interest. If someone says, "Hey, um, Sally, how's your mom doing? I know she was sick last week. I've been thinking about her and I'm concerned about her. How's she doing?" Well, that's a that's a, like a, a a a green flag, so to speak, saying that that person might be someone who would be interested in taking on a small role in helping to um, care for your aging loved ones. So. Uh, so kind of think about who might fit some of these descriptions. You know, you might ask friends who check in on you regularly, uh, family friends who offer help without being asked, and or, you know, um, any healthcare professionals too that that seem to be, you know, go above and beyond in 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 helping you. So we've we've talked about um, we've talked about um, your circle. Uh, we've talked about uh, groups. Um, you know, online forums, um, you know, places like, you know, we have an online community called Speaking Out on the Care of Your Aging Parents. That's a great place or other forums such as Reddit or other forums that have um, support for um, caring for aging loved ones or caring for loved ones with dementia. So surround, you know, again, besides people also surround yourself with, with other types of support as well. 
You know, one of the things in making affordable is my husband does this and it's, you know, bartering services. And so my husband is an auto mechanic. And so we have horses. And so uh, he just did a barter kind of a situation this week where he's going to get our farrier, the gentleman who trims our horse's feet. He's going to get him a couple of tires for his truck in exchange for him doing a trim on our horse's hooves. So, you know, is there something that you or someone in your family, you know, can do in exchange for providing uh, a service? So there's, there's like that give and take opportunity, utilize free resources. A lot of communities offer free support, the aging disability resource center or the senior center, the center of aging, whatever your County and your state calls your senior uh, resource center. If you're not sure who that is, just call the health department or the Department of, of Health and Human Services, and they will be able to point you in the right direction and see what free services, what community services are in your area. Catholic Charities, if you have a Catholic Charities in your area, they have a lot of opportunities for both caregivers and aging adults uh, for support. Uh, so as far as communication and coordination, uh, in the boot camp, we're actually going to give you a, um, a shareable calendar that everybody can have access to that will help you know, make things easier. We're going to show you how you have regular check-ins just to keep everybody on the same page and, you know, um, use technology like Google or Trello or some other things that we're going to talk about to help make the coordination of all this easier. And we're even going to talk about maybe having, if you have someone that's uh, real feels very good at organizing and would like to own the schedule so that you don't have to own that, that's even one plus better. So maybe they're not in a caregiving role, but they, maybe they're more of like an assistant role or they like organization. They like to move the paperwork or, or plan and organize. Maybe they take over the schedule for you. And so um, sometimes, and we just want to put, put this caution out. We want to, don't want to paint this, this completely rosy picture because this isn't easy and we're not trying to make it sound like it's easy. Um, you know, there be, there might be times, to bite, despite your best efforts, that not every care team member will be a perfect fit. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we don't want to do that warm body syndrome where we need help so bad and we feel so desperate that we need help that we just bring on whoever raises their hand because sometimes they may not be a good fit. So I think you're going to save time in the long run. To, to carefully screen and think about these people before you get them in, involved and make sure that they really are a good fit and talk to them before you, you commit to, they commit or you commit to having them a part of the care team, you know, have a conversation and say, you know, this is what it might look like. I, you know, are you sure you're up to this? Do you have any concerns or, you know, ab about helping out? And, you know, there may be people that raise their hand and say, yes, I can help. And then they're canceling all the time on the calendar. So there may be people that may not work out. So, you know, to sum it up, building a supportive care team is really vital, you know, for your health and happiness and is and also having uh, the right amount of care for your aging loved one. So, but, you know, identifying the right people, connecting with those kindred spirits, you know, trying to make this affordable, getting as much volunteer um, help as possible, communication, communicating effectively, um, and be mindful of the appropriate fit. So, we just encourage you, you know, get started on working on that, that building your care team today. It's so important. Uh, this is truly a labor of love. And I know it's a season and I know this caregiving role won't last forever, but it, you know, it could go on for some time. So we want you to feel good about what you're doing. We want you, it, it can be mixed baggage, mixed baggage because you may feel guilty about feeling frustrated, but yet at the same time, there's many moments where you're very grateful. And when it's all said and done, you're going to be able to look back and say, you know what, I, I feel real good about being able to have had a hand in, in assisting my aging loved one. So uh, click the link below, um, either go ahead and, and do our checklist and our little survey on, on how you're, you're handling caregiving in those three areas. Or if you're ready to jump in and actually start building that care team and having us alongside you to do that with you then uh, go ahead and click the link for the bootcamp and we would love to see you there. So we will see you back here soon next week on another Tuesday Tips. Take care.